What's up guys and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing my top five tips and tricks and turn this into this. So number one then, I'm gonna be talking about mounts and angles. Mounts are absolutely crucial to give the viewer a satisfying point of view, whether that's a realistic point of view or a more supernatural and creative point of view, such as a quick release mount, Chris's unique angle, or even Burn Peak's chainstay mount. What you wanna avoid doing is doing a boring shot such as just of your head continuously, you wanna make sure that the viewer is really immersed within the action and has a good angle of everything and really can understand what's going on. That leads on nicely to the next point. But before that, quick delivery. This is the GoPro mouth mount, which came a couple of days ago uh, from the Pro Standard. Big thanks to Francis Cade for giving these away and obviously a big thanks to the Pro Standard for making that possible. Links below if you wanna check them out. So this is quite a realistic angle since it kind of comes from the eyes of the rider or rather the chin and that works just like this. Angle here so you can point it further up or further down depending on what you want to do and then uh, you're supposed to bolt these orange tabs this is the shot so this is the short so this is the sort of shot it's gonna get I'm gonna walk around my room and you can see what it's like other mounts include the GoPro shorty which is ideal for vlogging because you can, it's a handheld, it's a handheld setup which you can extend all the way to there if you want an angle further back, or you can set it up as a tripod. Now onto some classic mounts you may or may not have heard of. There's a stem mount which goes on your handlebars or stem, and then you can shoot just exactly what's in front of you. You have your hands in the hoods in the shot, just like this. Then also there's a helmet mount. This is just a general mount which comes with all the GoPros. Uh, you can fit that nicely in there, then slide it in until it clicks onto your helmet, and there you go. Second thing I'm gonna be talking about is settings. This is crucial if you really wanna get the most out of your GoPro footage. So what I recommend is having a wide field of view, or if you're really going for it, go up to super view, and that has a massive field of view. There's wide, and there's linear. I'm sticking to wide. Hyper smooth you want on, you can also have it on high and boost, but that really overstabilizes your footage. So unless you're doing an epic professional trail, I wouldn't recommend that for road cycling. As for resolution frames per second, you can either go with 60 or 30, depending if you want to slow it down. A more cinematic view would be 30, and then depending on how much your computer can run, I'd either go with 4K or 1080. I usually record in 1080, but I'm gonna be testing it with 4K because I'm not too sure just yet. Also, I'd recommend your bitrate on high if you're in 4K or 2.7K, so you get the most, so you get the most out of your footage and it's not blurry on the sides and each frame looks great. Now onto the third point, which is audio, and there is nothing more frustrating than just having a really crap piece of footage which has wind noise all the way through it, and you just can't use it. Very, very frustrating. Happened plenty of times to me, and there are a few ways you can avoid that. From the GoPro 6 up, you can control the wind noise as a factor in the settings here. As you can see, you can switch the wind noise from auto, so it automatically detect the wind noise, to on, so it's always filtering out the wind noise, to off, when it just includes the wind and um, your footage is ruined. If that wind noise feature still isn't working for you, what you can do is add a little bit of fluff. You can get it for like a few quid online, uh, and just add it around the microphone uh, on the GoPro. Try not to cover it, otherwise, you won't have any sound, uh, and that should help filter the wind noise. Now, if that still doesn't work, like it did with me, I got the GoPro Media Mod, which is perfect for vlogging, and allows you to add a few different features on if you want. I'm not gonna do that. But all you have to do is take the door of the GoPro off, and go ahead and slide it in. There you can see it says mics front, which means that the audio is coming from this mic, and you can also set it to the back and automatic. Number four, I'm gonna be talking about post-production which is when you have all your files and you put it into your computer, and what do you do with that? Now I use an app called Image Capture, which means... Image Capture? Yeah, I use an app called Image Capture on my Mac. All I have to do is connect this with a cable to the computer and it'll automatically find the files. But if you try and do it through Finder, it's not gonna work. And if not, then you have to take everything apart, get your SD card out, put it in an adapter, and it's a whole load of faff. So Image Capture, I recommend that. Now also what you wanna do to make your footage as best as, as, best as possible? 
Now what you want to do to make your footage as good as possible is color correct it. So you can record with the GoPro in flat, meaning that the color isn't going to be too saturated. And then you can really edit it properly in post, -produc in post production with a LUT or just do it yourself. Now I suck at color correcting, but there are many, many videos on YouTube. So I recommend to give it a go. But what I use is just the GoPro color, which is really nice because it suits my sort of red style etc. Also in post-production, if you want to make the best for your footage and really and really want the viewer to understand as much as possible as what's going on, you can use your Garmin or Wahoo or whatever data and overlay that over the footage to, to add in the watts, speed, heart rate, whatever it is you want to add. Now that's done in the software called Garmin Verb, which is also the name of the camera, but you don't need one of those cameras as much as Garmin wants you to buy one of them. It's pretty easy to add the footage in that software. On to number five, which is gonna be general tips. General tips can help a lot. Number one would be clean the lens. You don't have to have like a, a fancy cloth to do it. Just do it with your shirt, wipe the lens. Already looking a bit better. And also tighten it securely to the mount because they're also, apart from having bad audio, is nothing worse than having tightened it to the mount and it just flops down and your whole ride it's just filming your handlebars. And also, if you are ever filming indoors with GoPro, I'm using my iPhone because it has a nice depth of field. Uh, you probably wanna be recording in linear or narrow on the GoPro so you don't get that fisheye effect, which really looks a bit odd indoors. Also, charge it before every ride and check your SD card capacity. Because as you can see there, next to the battery, I only have 21 minutes 59 recording left on the GoPro and you don't wanna be stuck outdoors, getting ready to film, you're all excited about it and then there's nothing on your SD card. Having said that, whilst you are on the go, you can delete files from your GoPro by scrolling down. 